So, how do you actually get HIV? I know this is a question that causes a lot of worry. On my channel, I get so many comments from people who've done something, maybe had sex once, or shared a razor, or had a scare, and now they're terrified that they may have HIV. And I get it. That fear can take over your thoughts. You start googling, overthinking, every little thing, and it can affect your sleep, your mental health, and even your relationships. And that is why I made this video. Not just to explain the real ways how you get HIV, but also to help alleviate some of that anxiety. Because the truth is that HIV isn't passed as easily as most people think. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the actual risk based on medical evidence and explain what increases or lowers your risks. So let's get into it. And just in case if you're wondering, who is this guy? I am a specialist pharmacist in HIV and sexual health. I've been a pharmacist for 17 years and 14 of that has been in HIV medicine. I have worked in four major HIV centers in London. I've seen thousands of patients and I have just reached a phase in my life where I want to give back. Let's go over how HIV is actually passed from one person to another. The most common way is through unprotected sex, especially anal or vaginal sex. HIV can live in fluids like semen and vaginal fluid. If those fluids get into your body, especially through areas like vagina or the rectum, the virus can then get into your bloodstream. Anal sex has the highest risk because the lining of the rectum is very thin and can tear easily. Vaginal sex carries a lower risk, but it is still possible, especially if the person with HIV is not taking their tablets or not on treatment. HIV can also spread through sharing needles or injecting equipment. This includes drugs like needles used for drugs, but also things like insulin pens. I've heard of big families sharing insulin pens, maybe to save money or just out of pure habits. But if one person in the family has HIV and that needle is used on someone else, it's a direct route for the virus to enter the body. There is also risk from blood transfusions, but this is now extremely rare in countries where blood is properly screened. So it's only high risk in countries which have resource-limited settings or poorer countries. And finally, HIV can pass from mother to the baby during childbirth or breastfeeding. But the good news is that if the mother is on treatment, that risk can drop to almost zero. So overall, HIV needs very specific conditions to spread. It's passed through certain fluids, and only when those fluids have a way to get into your bloodstream. And the good news here is that with treatment and prevention, we can stop almost all of new infections. Now, this right here is the most important part of the entire video, okay? So when it comes to HIV, transmission depends on one thing more than anything else, and that is the viral load. So viral load means the amount of HIV in someone's blood. So if the virus is high, then the risk of passing it on is higher. But if the viral load is low or undetectable, then the virus can't be passed on. Full stop. Just having sex with someone who has HIV doesn't automatically mean you will get HIV. That is actually a myth. So if somebody has HIV and they are on treatment and their viral load is undetectable, well, guess what? You will not catch HIV even if you have sex without a condom. That's what this image shows. So on the left, you see a test tube full of the virus. And that is someone with a high viral load and not on treatment. And on the right, you see a clean test tube with barely any virus. And that is someone who is on medication. So the virus is so low that it can't even be detected 
And that is what undetectable level means. And most importantly, that person can't pass the virus to anyone. And this is what we call U equals U or undetectable equals untransmittable. It is one of the biggest breakthroughs in HIV care. And that's why getting tested and starting treatment early doesn't just help the person who's living with HIV, but it also protects their partners too. This is real, and this is backed by science, and it can save lives. Now, people often ask me, what if I have sex with someone who's HIV positive and not taking any treatment? Can I get HIV from just one time? And the answer is yes, it's possible, but not guaranteed. Just having sex with someone who has HIV doesn't always mean you will get HIV. And that's even if you have sex without a condom. Let me explain what I mean through this picture. It shows what happens inside the vagina after sex. So the red blob here is semen containing HIV from a person who you had sex with. Now, for HIV to cause infection, it has to go through the thin lining of vagina to reach the bloodstream. But that lining acts as a natural wall. So if there are no cuts or sores, the virus often cannot get through into the blood. Sometimes the virus does break through, and that is when HIV can be passed on. So yes, there is a risk, especially if the person has high amount of virus in their body. But just one time doesn't mean you'll definitely get HIV. The risk goes up the more times it happens, or there are things like other sexually transmitted infections present, or if there is bleeding, that's when the risk goes up. Another way to think about risk of transmission is like this. So imagine you are sitting next to someone who has a very bad cold or flu. You sit next to them once, chances are you probably won't get sick. But if you sit next to them every single day while they're coughing and sneezing, your chances of catching the cold will go up. And it's the same with HIV. One time exposure carries some risk, but it's low. But the more times you're exposed, especially if the person has high viral load or is not taking treatment, the more chances the virus has to get through and cause an infection. Now, let's talk about the risk per exposure if you've had sex with somebody who's HIV positive and is not taking treatment, so that that person's viral load is quite high. This is a screenshot taken from UK BASH guidelines on HIV post-exposure prophylaxis, and this was published in 2021. And it shows the estimated risk of you getting HIV from different types of exposure. Let's look at a few key ones. So let's look at receptive anal intercourse. So sometimes it's called bottoming. Now this activity carries the highest risk. So it's about one in 90 if you've had anal intercourse and if the person ejaculates, the risk goes up 1 in 65. If you're talking about receptive vaginal intercourse, this seems to have a lower risk. So the estimated risk is 1 in 1,000. If you're talking about insertive sex, so that's the person who's penetrating, the risk is much lower, like 1 in 666 for anal sex and 1 in 1,219 for vaginal sex. The big takeaway here is that HIV is not passed easily and not all exposures are high risk. And again, if somebody is on treatment and has an undetectable viral load, then all of these risks drop to zero. So rather than guessing or panicking, what we need to look at is the real data and then we can decide what the next course of action would be. So remember guys, these are the things that will increase your chances of getting HIV after exposure. So number one is your partner has a very high viral load. Number two would be 
that other type of STIs are present like herpes and syphilis because that is when, you know, sores appear on the vaginal wall or the penis and then there's higher chances that the virus can go through the bloodstream or you have cuts or sores or bleeding during sex or if you're having sex during menstruation, which means a woman is on her period. And these are the ways you can lower your risk of getting HIV, which is if your partner has HIV, make sure they are on treatment. If you are having casual sex or you don't know the status, make sure you're correctly using condoms all the time. Or if you're doing high-risk activities, make sure you're taking PrEP. So it's pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's one tablet once a day and it prevents your risk of getting HIV. And also, you are regularly getting tested for HIV if you're engaging with multiple partners. Now, there are other routes of transmissions as well that has been looked at. For instance, if you're sharing needles, it could be, you know, sharing insulin pens or you're injecting drugs and using the same needles, your risk of exposure could be 1 in 149. If you have needle stick injuries, these usually happens in the hospitals. So if when the nurses and the doctors are taking bloods and then they get needle stick injury from the patients, that risk is estimated to be 1 in 333 exposures. Human bites, I mean, I can't think of any case that I have seen in my life or read about it. So the risk is extremely low, less than one in almost 10,000. We only consider if there has been bleeding or the biting has been quite severe. And only then we would consider, but again, ex risk is extremely low. One way where I would say that the risk is almost 100% certain if you've had blood transfusion with somebody who's HIV positive, chances are you are going to get HIV for sure. Now, it's also important to know how HIV is not transmitted. So HIV is not transmitted through sharing cutlery or sharing food or through kissing or through insect bites or sharing a pool with a HIV positive person. Another thing to note is that HIV doesn't really survive outside human body. So if you're sharing toilet seats with somebody or you're shaking hands with somebody or you're hugging, you're not going to get HIV through that way either. So the take-home message is that not all exposures are equal. The best thing to do is for all HIV patients to take their tablets, correctly keep their virus under control, and they will not transmit the virus to other people. If you're unsure or you're engaging in high-risk activities, make sure you wear condoms or use PrEP tablets and constantly get test it to protect yourself and please share the facts and stop s spreading misinformation because that does nothing but adds to patients anxieties and promotes stigma thanks for watching guys i really hope this video helps take some of the anxiety out of hiv transmission i get so many comments from people who've had very low risk exposures but they are overwhelmed with fear and it starts to really take over their life. And that kind of stress is real and it's painful, but often unnecessary. So if this video brought you clarity or comfort, please share it to help someone else who might be stuck in that same spiral. Also, let me know in the comments what you think of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos that breaks things down simply and truthfully. Thank you for watching, guys. But before you go, here is an important disclaimer. I made this video to help educate and raise awareness about HIV in a clear and simple way. The statistical information that I've shared is based on BASH 2021 PEP guidelines, which were up to date at the time of making this video. But please remember, guidelines change over time, and medical advice should always be personalized. For the most current and accurate information, always speak to your doctor or visit a local sexual health clinic. The visuals and explanations in this video are meant to help you understand things more clearly, but they don't cover every situation and shouldn't be used to make medical decisions on your own. I've done my best to make sure the content is accurate and respectful. Still, I'm not responsible for anyone who uses the information here. This video is meant to inform, not to scare 
or stigmatize. Please watch with care, share with kindness, and always double check with a healthcare professional if you're unsure about anything. That's it for today, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, folks.